How's it going folks? Welcome back to another video. It's Keaton here and in this one we're talking about how to set up workflows in your Go High Level account. Workflows is brand new. Well, it's brand new to me. It's probably about six months to a year old and I was just clinging to uh, campaigns and triggers before but now I see the vision and workflows are amazing. So if you're watching this, you're probably just figuring out how to actually use them. I assume you're a beginner. If you're looking to transfer your campaigns or triggers over to workflows, this isn't the video. This is how to create one from scratch. So let's hop into my computer and check it out. Here we are inside a test account and I'm gonna come over to automation first. And then up here in the corner, you'll see that we've got workflows as an option and campaigns and triggers. So campaigns and triggers, arguably outdated. They are the previous version of what workflows combines into one. So if you're starting out new and you're trying to learn how to run automations inside high level, workflows is where you wanna start. So at this point in the video, I would usually describe a couple use cases of workflows for you, but there are literally thousands. And so I'm just gonna jump in and show you what's available and what's possible inside workflows. So first thing you're gonna do is click create workflow. And then uh, as you can see, we've got all of these recipes in here, but we wanna create one that is from scratch. So we're gonna say start from scratch and create new workflow. Awesome, now we're inside our workflow. So let's go up here. First of all, we wanna keep this clean and name it test workflow. So now that we're in here, you'll see that the first thing we need to add is a trigger for this workflow. So if we click on workflow trigger, we've got three options. We can have a CRM trigger, a Facebook trigger, or a Shopify trigger. Any of these will work. There's not really a right answer here. It's just depending on what you are doing. So for this example, let's select Facebook because we're running a Facebook lead ad. And uh, if we come here, you'll see Facebook lead ad form submitted. So save trigger. So this means if we're running an ad on Facebook, specifically with Facebook lead ads, which Facebook lead ads are different than like a landing page or a messenger bot, when this is populated inside of high level, which we would have to go through and set up in a different spot. I'll make a video about that, but for now, Let's just assume you've got this integrated, you've got your Facebook page integrated, and anytime someone submits a lead form on from your Facebook page or from an ad you're running or your client's ad, then they're going to come into this workflow. So the next thing we can do here is click on this plus button, and I'll take myself off the corner here so you guys can see everything. But you can see that there's a ton of different options here about what we could add to this workflow. So we've got external communications, CRM, membership actions, and conditions and workflow. So let's talk about each of those. External communications is going to be us sending an email or sending an SMS or any of these channels. A CRM event is going to be some sort of internal automation, uh, as you can see, like adding a task or sending a review request or adding to a workflow, a different workflow or uh, adding a tag or something like that. That's going to be your CRM. All of these actions in here used to be in triggers. Then we've got membership actions. So we've got membership grant offer or revoke offer. This is different because memberships are unique, I guess. And then conditions and workflows, this will determine when something happens or if it happens at all. <laughs> awesome, so that probably doesn't make a ton of sense now, but I promise it will in a minute. One more thing before we get started, we need to go to settings and talk about a few of these settings. So you can see the time window on this workflow is that it can happen anytime or at a specific time. We're gonna keep this one on at any time, but if you wanted to do a specific time, you could change it You know, just weekdays between eight and five. Sender address, this means any emails that are going to be sent will come from this name and address. So let's uh, put my email here. So now that I have that in there, any emails that I put into this workflow will come from this name and this email. Then we've got contact management. This is whether or not we're going to allow multiple or stop on response. So allow multiple would be like if somebody opts into our offer, I don't know, whatever you're running twice, do you want them to get two versions of this workflow or do you only want them to be able to get the workflow once something to consider stop on response a good way to understand this is if you're sending an appointment reminders campaign you don't want it to stop on response because you might say something like hey we're we're texting to confirm your appointment for tomorrow at 3 p.m text yes to confirm and then if you have stop on response on if that person replies yes the whole rest of the workflow is going to stop Conversation management, auto mark is red. This one's really nice. If somebody responds to your workflow, it will be auto marked as red, which isn't default in high level. And then here, workflow sequence management, you can see has been deprecated. Please use event start date action. So we'll show you that inside the actions later. So let's say we're setting up a workflow for uh, appointment reminders. Uh, let's make sure we save those changes. 
and then we'll start making the workflow in here. So keep in mind, whatever action we add in here will happen right after a Facebook lead form is submitted. So let's do a text message. And in this text message, we say something like, hey, and then we can do custom value, contact first name. Thanks for requesting your free $500 voucher for skydiving from Skydive Atlanta. And then in this initial text, it's always good to ask a question so that they can respond to that question. So for the question we're gonna add here, why don't we add something that's just pretty simple to show you the example. Did you request this voucher? Did you request this voucher? Just to confirm that we actually have the right number. Click Save Action. Then we're gonna click Wait. And here we could just do a time delay, which why don't we show that? So we'll do wait one minute. And then we're gonna send an email. And in that email, we'll just send this, save action. And that email could just be more information about Skydive Atlanta. Nothing really important that needs to go in there right now just because we're showing how the automations work. Then we come in and let's add another wait step. But instead of doing a time delay, we're gonna scroll down and do contact reply. So we're not waiting for a specific amount of time, we're waiting for them to reply to the SMS that we sent. Save action. Then we're gonna come at another step, which would be an if else step. And in this if else step, this is where we set up whether or not they replied. So we're gonna say contact reply, contact replied, and then we're gonna say yes. They responded yes. Or alternatively, we could come in here and say intent type is and then positive or yes. So that means if they say yes or yeah or something else to that first text that we sent, then we're going to do something depending on the sentiment of their response. So if it's positive, then we're gonna keep going. And let's say we wanna send them another text, put that text in there. If it's negative, then we'll just say, uh, apologies, you know, we didn't mean to send this to you, thanks for getting back to us. And then that will finish. But on this text here, what we would wanna say is great. When is a good time for us to connect about your free skydiving session or whatever it is we're offering? Great. And then we wait for them to get back to us. But let's say they aren't getting back to us. So what could we do? We could do wait again, and we could do contact reply, reply to SMS, click save action. Then we come in here and do an if else again. And then we're gonna say contact replied. And this is actually, I misspoke earlier. This is for whether or not they replied. Let us say if they didn't reply, then we're going to text them again. But we don't wanna text them immediately. So let's say if they haven't replied within five hours, then we'll send them another text that says, just following up on this first name. And let's take, get rid of just because following up on this is a little bit better. Great. And then here, if they did reply, that's great. We're just gonna start manually following up with them. There's a couple other things that we could add in here though. So let's say when somebody comes in, we wanna come add a tag to them and we want the tag to be FB. So that means that they're tagged as a Facebook lead inside our CRM because we might be generating through uh, tons of different channels on here. The other thing we could do is come and add an update an opportunity. If you don't know how opportunities are, we'll cover it in a separate video. But basically you'd come in here, select the pipeline, which um, let's say this is our Facebook ads pipeline. And then we'd say, we'd set this person as an opt-in for this specific thing because they opted in for the voucher. And then we'd put the name as the contact full name, the opportunity source as Facebook, and then the lead value we could assign, I don't know, maybe $200, depending on how much it's actually worth to us. And then we can set this as an open status because we haven't won, lost, or abandoned them yet. Awesome, save action. So guys, that was a quick training on how to set up workflows. There's tons of different things that we could do in here. Please let me know what questions you have below, but it's very versatile. And one more thing that I'll train you on before we head out is coming in here to history, you'll be able to see all of the people who have executed on this specific workflow and then status, you can also see the status of those people. So check these out if something's going wrong with your workflow. Then one more thing is to always make sure that you turn this from draft to publish so that anytime anything happens, one of these trigger events happens in here, 
this actually fires. Click save. Thanks so much for tuning into today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoy making workflows inside Go High Level. If you haven't signed up for High Level, please use my link below. It really helps me out. And we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.